Hey everybody, I've got my friend Rachel here. We are doing two videos, single and not wanting to mingle because we have lived the single life. I'm 31 and Rachel's 35, five. When you get to that age and you're not married, you're like, uh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna have this video kind of discussing what all goes on in the lovely single life and how to live single and how to do life single. So we're gonna shoot for that in this first video. And then the second one, single and wanting to mingle when you wanna be married and you're waiting on the Lord for that kind of thing. So hopefully this will be a blessing to you. We've got a whole page and a half of notes. It's gonna be hilarious. This is just living the single life, day-to-day -day stuff. How do you do it? Okay, my plan was to stay in Canada, get married when I was 22, have four kids, and live on the farm. That was my plan. Rachel, did you have a plan? I too wanted to stay on the farm, but not in Canada. <laughs> okay. In Ohio, and build a home down the road from my parents, and get married, and have kids and horses. And I got horses. <laughs> that's the only thing. That's about the only thing there it that, is. That, that, uh, that I've, I've checked off. So <laughs> Very good, very good. You can tell in your own life, if you're watching this and you're single in your later 20s or 30s or wherever you're at, you had a plan and you watched your friends all get married and you're like, yeah, okay. The first point that I had is enjoy your single life. It's a season. It's a wonderful one. Cherish it. You only get one shot. It's a good thing. Okay, so many people think that being single is less than or you're not whole if you're not with another person. That's just not the case. God has so much for you in your single life and you're supposed to enjoy it. So Rachel, how do you enjoy your single life? Oh, I have <laughs> had a blast with my single life. It might sound a little unfair to say I'm getting married in two days. Oh, yeah. And so... Forgot to mention that. I'm not married yet, but I will be soon. But yeah. even as a single person, I didn't start off that way. But I loved being single. Um, I can go where I want, when I want, do what I want. And so definitely there's a propensity for some selfishness to set in there because you literally can do <laughs> what you want. And if something inconveniences you, you just do what you want anyway. Um, having somebody else in your life definitely changes that for sure. But I figured out pretty quick, I moved out to Wyoming and didn't know anybody in the town that I was in and figured out real fast if I wanted to do the things I loved, which was horseback riding, hiking, being in the mountains. Sometimes you just got to do it by yourself or you're not going to do it at all. And so that was a steep learning curve for me. And it was an immediate like, oh, well, I want to go do this and I don't know anybody, so I guess I'm just going to go do it on my own and doing that over and over and reinforcing that and being like, oh, actually, this is really enjoyable as an introvert, especially to go hike by myself, be by myself or go ride my horse. It was just very peaceful. I remember moving. I stopped at a restaurant <laughs> on my way out here and it was a sit down restaurant. And I was like, I've been in the car. It's a 23 hour drive and I was like I just want to sit in a restaurant not a movie vehicle and eat and it was so uncomfortable to be like just one yeah just one like, <laughs> just me but I'm moving I'm driving so it's okay like I'm not alone in the world it's fine like you don't have to worry about me I'm just eating a meal on the road you felt like you owed somebody an explanation for why you were just a table for one <laughs> Uh, but I remember eating by myself and watching this family across the way with their little kids. And it was just like, well, this isn't so bad. It's no different than eating with somebody else other than you get done faster because <laughs> there's no conversations that you just eat and then get on the road again. And it was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. I guess my little story in relation to that is about the movie theater. If you go to the movies, it's usually with somebody. And there came a moment where there was a movie that I really wanted to see. Nobody was available and everybody's married with family or I don't know, whatever. I don't, I don't know how old I was. But I was like, man, I really want to go see that movie. But I can't go by myself. I mean, you get all these thoughts that are like, you're going to look like an idiot if you're by yourself. Like nobody goes to the movies by themselves. And I was like, I really want to see this movie. So I was like, I'm just gonna go. And I planned it all. I was like gonna walk in just right on time. It's gonna be in the dark. And I got there and I'm sitting down and you get thoughts like, everybody's looking at me. Everybody's judging me. I'm by myself. I don't have anybody to go with. Everybody's thinking about me. It's not about you. It's not, it wasn't about me. It's chances are nobody, nobody's probably thinking about you. You're just thinking about yourself. I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> And I asked God to go with me. I was like, God, would you be, would you be my plus one? <laughs> would you go to this movie with me? Because you just have to do things by yourself. And 
you learn how to invite God into it. And it was great. It was fine. And now I enjoy going to the movies by myself. <laughs> oh, shoot. Nobody can come. I'm just, you know what? It'll be great. And I legit had this happen last week. Okay, I went to... <laughs> I went to um, a movie and there's this older couple that's walking down the aisle looking for their <laughs> looking for their seats in the theater and the guy's like he could see that I was by myself and he's like oh we can't go over there people don't go to the movies by themselves <laughs> he had assumed I was waiting for somebody and like we can't go there she's sitting by herself and so they picked another spot <laughs> and it just it humored me years ago I would have been like oh hide me now but it was really humoring because it's like, yeah, people do go to the movies by themselves and, and it's totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get over self-consciousness, get comfortable being by yourself in front of people. Do something by yourself and be okay with it is basically what the... It's not as bad as you think. No, it's not. It's, it's way worse. Like, it's it way worse. It sounds way worse. <laughs> it sounds than, worse, yeah. Than you think it will be. Yeah. So. Yeah. It can actually be enjoyable. It's very enjoyable. And you do kind of get to the point where you're like, man, I like my single life too much. I should probably <laughs> go spend time with people. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're going to spend time getting close to the Lord. You've got time to seek the Lord and get in relationship with him. I don't know if you had anything to share on those. Yeah, things. I definitely, I mean, I've been single pretty much my whole life up until recently. And when I moved here, I found lots of ways to fill my time and did not spend a ton of time in the Word on a regular basis. I would do like Bible studies that would pop up quarterly or things like that. And then through a variety of things, which I think we will probably talk about later, probably. Um, I got rid of my cable because it, I would binge watch the Hallmark Channel and things <laughs> like that. And so I was just wasting way too much time. So I got rid of it kind of as like a, it wasn't really a New Year's resolution, but kind of. And started reading Genesis verse by verse and going through it that way. And it was amazing how quickly that became so enjoyable. Like yeah. I didn't want to put it down because you, you delve in, you invest in it. And it was not long at all before I didn't even miss having cable. I mean, I still would watch movies, but like I, I didn't miss it. Like I was like, I'm, I'm going to grieve this loss in my life. <laughs> And it was easy how I just supplemented that time in the word and it just became, I mean, addictive sounds like a bad thing, but it was just very compelling. Like, Ooh, I I've got, you know, 20 minutes. I can get through another chapter. Yeah. It definitely was trading one diversion into something that definitely fed me better. Yes. Yeah. It's important to keep your relationship with the Lord up because technically you are in a marriage with God yourself while you're single. Like if you've asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, you're in relationship with him and it's kind of like a marriage covenant because we're the bride, he's the bridegroom. If we're not keeping up with that one, how do you expect to be, um, you got to practice now what you, this is a horrible explanation. You're married already if you're saved. You're married. Yeah, you are. You really are. And so how's that one going? Are you spending time with the Lord? Are you making the most of your time or are you just filling it up with I'm lonely and nobody wants to spend or like everybody's married or, you know, that kind of stuff. So just keep your, keep your chin up. Um, find a young adults group. Yes. We love young adults groups. Yes, we do. <laughs> Started one back in August, like two years ago, I think. Was it two years ago? And that's where I met Rachel. And when you get into fellowship with people that are of like mind and they're going through the same thing and you're all single or dating or whatever, it's just really encouraging. Maybe our group was a little bit of an anomaly. I like to think not. That's pretty good. But I do think it being a, a young adults group that was singles only totally changed the dynamic of the group. Yes. Because I've been in young adult groups before where... Some people are married, some people have kids, things like that. And it totally changes the dynamic to be in a group where literally everyone is single. There's not somebody waiting at home for you. Um, it gave us so much freedom in getting to yeah. know each other. Because if we stayed at Bible study till 10 o'clock at night, it was totally it was fine. fine. Like, <laughs> um, so I definitely think that added a different dynamic than yeah. any young adults group I was part of. So it made it a little weird in the beginning because you're like, oh. Oh, we're all single. Who's going to be the creeper that's going to try to like, make this awkward? Because um, we all know we're single. And no, it was actually, I think it bonded it us really, all yeah, a little bit in a way. Like, yeah. not that that was the focus at all, but being in that same place made a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Go find a young adults group or a Bible study or something. Find people your age who are in the same boat as you. It's okay to have all married couple friends. It's fine too. But man, there's something about having another single friend that is just, it's a really good thing. So I think that's a, 
It's a good point. Be okay with being the single one of the group. Okay, so if you do have all married couple friends and they're having their family gatherings and they're having their church times and they're like the group activities and you're the only single one, okay? You just have to get over it. Be okay with it. It's fine. You're single mm -hmm. and it's okay. And it's great to find marriages that you want to emulate too and yes and have people already in place when you do meet somebody that are already feeding into your life as a single person and can then feed into your life whether you're dating or engaged or married and it helps to have those people in place and not wait till you're engaged to go find a couple to mentor you or to be involved in your life mm -hmm. yeah definitely the financial end okay so when you're single you're like money <laughs> i love money <laughs> We can do whatever we want with money. And then you figure out that you're like, oh, I shouldn't do whatever I want with money. Uh, so there's, I don't know, what'd you learn about money? I learned how to budget. That was huge for me. The first three months were rough, where I actually sat down and did it because you think you know what you spend, but you have no clue. No. And then when you start guessing and documenting and you realize how far off you are, it takes a while to adjust that. So I would encourage you, if, you're, if you start budgeting, give it six months. I promise you it gets way easier once you actually figure out what you do. The first three months were rough because you were so wrong on all of these categories, <laughs> but that was huge for me to like get my finances under control, get debt paid off. I got all of that taken care of so that I get to go into marriage debt free, which I'm huge. so excited by. I've been blessed to be able to do that, but I also worked my tail off to organize that and, and structure that so that I knew how much extra I could put on my student loans every month and do things like that. So there's so many options out there. There's so many apps that do like all of the math for you if you're not a math person. <laughs> Person, so you literally just plug it in and it does everything for you mm -hmm. that is huge because if you don't know what you're spending and how you're saving like when opportunities come up you you can't take them because you don't you don't know what you can afford to do mm -hmm. definitely and learn to tithe give 10% yes. to the Lord learn how to be a giver um, and also learn how to save I feel like I was kind of bad at that you know how there's like the spender and the saver <laughs> Ah, oh, but I had to learn how to save. So like God will help you use your money in the places that he needs you to put it in. Okay, so we're supposed to be good stewards. And so it's a good idea while you're single to learn how to manage your money. Because ultimately you, you have the say with the Lord, of course, hopefully. And together you make a good team and he'll show you where to put your money. So if we're good stewards of it, if we know how to handle it, if we can budget it. If you suck at saving, you're going to, Lord, help me. <laughs> Okay, if you're a good saver and you don't give anything, God's gonna work on you. Hey, you know, learn to give. So he's gonna work on you on the spot that you are kind of uncomfortable in because he's looking for your faith and your trust in him. So learn how to have open hands, but also just not to be, you know, not to spend everything, and, you know. Learn how to pay bills, learn how to do taxes, how to save, how to make goals and deadlines and meet them. Would you like to share about that? Yeah, as a single person, it's really easy to break commitments to yourself. Oh, yeah really easy. I can do it um, tomorrow. It's if you tell somebody, hey, you know, I'm gonna write a book and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna work on that every day. Oh Rachel and you have somebody to hold you accountable. It's a whole lot easier to uh, shirk something if nobody else knows it's a goal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's definitely some very motivated people who can challenge themselves. Yes. Um, but it's very different to tell somebody else your goal and then have them hold you accountable versus just yourself. Even if it's something private and you don't want to share it, just say, hey, I'm working on a goal. Once a week, will you check in with me and, and ask me how it's going? And just having that accountability so that you know, oh shoot, so-and-so is gonna check in on me, so I, I don't wanna tell him I didn't do anything, so I better do something. But yes, doing goals is, is awesome, and I feel like as a single person, it keeps you from getting stagnant and just doing yeah. the same thing day in, day out. Like if you want to go someplace, if you wanna do something, I mean, I wanted to go to Alaska for years, and so, Every month, I'd put a little bit of money in an envelope, like someday I'm gonna take this money to Alaska. And I did. And then as a natural saver, I did not spend all the money that I saved <laughs> when I went to Alaska. What? So I still have an Alaska envelope and I continue to put money in that. So someday I wanna go back. That's cool. I wanna drive once oh, Canada, once yeah. do that. 
border situation. How about um, volunteer and share your gift with others, but don't get used by people because you're single. Okay, this is a huge one. Do you want to take it? This is a huge one. <laughs> um, okay. Especially if you're super involved in your church. If yes. If you're very active in your community, depending on what your job is, if you have a skill set that a lot of people seek out, it is very, very easy for people to put things on you. And mm -hmm. I mean, even to this day, I have slight guilt every time like the nursery sign up gets passed around because I'm like, I know this is not my calling. And I play piano during praise and worship and I can't be in two places at once. So there should be zero guilt <laughs> that I can't sign up for the nursery, but because it gets passed around and it's just like alms for the poor <laughs> and you're just like, oh, <laughs> pressure. I, I pressure to help in an area I know I'm not called in. Um, but yes, and people, people are well-meaning. They don't mm -hmm. intend to do it. And I do it a lot to myself. I'm just like, oh, they're doing this event. I can help with that. Mm -hmm. I can help with that. But setting up boundaries yeah. is huge and not letting people walk all over you yeah. and just assume because you're single and don't have a family that you have nothing better to do with your time. Mm -hmm. Because when I was working on a kind of self-study um, and I would spend on weekends sometimes like 70 hours a day just dug into the word and my phone would be on silent and like that fed me and I needed that. Mm -hmm. And just because I didn't have a family, like and now that things have changed, I haven't gotten to do that in a few years and I miss that. Like it's a different season for me, but I'm yeah. like, ooh, there are days where I'm like, just shut me in a room with my study books and let me just have at it and look at the Hebrew and everything and just have a heyday. <laughs> But you don't always get that time. So just because you're not doing something that other people would consider important, don't shortchange yourself. Like if you set aside, I'm going to go to the mountain and sit in silence for three hours. And somebody's like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Do you want to do this? No. I have, I have plans. <laughs> I have, you don't want to tell them that you're just going to go yeah. sit on the mountain by yourself. You can just say, no, I've already got plans. Thank you so much for inviting me. Don't discredit your plans because it doesn't yeah. involve somebody else or because you think... Well, it's selfish for me to want to, you know, go to bed two hours early because I've had a long week. Like, don't yeah. let other people unintentionally or intentionally guilt trip you into thinking that your plans don't count just because they don't involve a family. Yeah, you gotta learn how to say no. No. Practice. Practice. No. no. <laughs> it's super nice to have these gifts from God and be able to share them, but God won't pack your set schedule so full that you like we yeah yeah there's just some standards and some boundaries and so just be be okay with having the holy spirit help you out and be like lord do you want me to do this do you want me to sign up for this thing do you want me to go here and he'll probably help you out actually i'm pretty sure pretty sure like 100 percent he'll help you he'll help you say no too and I heard somebody say one time too, if you're in a position that you're not supposed to be in, mm -hmm. but you're filling it because you think no one else is available, it's preventing somebody else who's supposed to do it from stepping in there. Yeah. So like for that example, if I did the nursery because I felt like, well, nobody else is doing it, but there was somebody else that God wants there and they see me doing it. And they're, they're like, not oh. going to step up because yeah. they think the role is filled when really they're the one who's supposed to be there. So don't. Don't get in somebody else's way either by doing their job when you're not supposed to. Yeah, touche. Yeah. Do not compare your life with others and think that you're falling behind. Okay, we all know this one. Okay, you see your peers and they have the house and the career and the cars and the kids. And you're like, wow, I'm single, living my best life. <laughs> You can't look across the fence and be like, I should be there. Because God has a plan for you that looks different than anybody else's plan. And we get stuck. We get major stuck. You start getting discouraged, depressed, because you're looking at your friend and they're married. Or they're, they've got kids. Guys, you have a life that God has given you. Do not discredit that. Be happy. Be thankful for your life right now. If you are not at their spot, it's okay. <laughs> I legit just packed up my entire life in this last year. I was about to buy a house. I finally got what I wanted, so to speak. I had the house with the car, with the, you know, I was like, hey, everything except husband and kids. But I was like, hey, I feel like I'm getting, you know, I'm progressing. And then um, God's like, okay, give it all up. Let's go on the road. So I, I was like, Lord, 
So yes, I am 31 with four plastic totes and a suitcase to my name living in another person's house, but I'm loving it. I the, the will of God is what you're after. If he wants you to have a house and a career and the husband and the kids, like it'll happen. Just, there's no timeline. Is that correct to say? You don't have to make up time with God. Yeah. You don't have to make up time. You're not missing out if he hasn't brought it to you yet. Yeah. She just summed all that up in what I said in like five minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. So this is just why I'm doing the video with Rachel. <laughs> okay, let's see. Figure out what you believe versus what your parents taught you to believe. I grew up in a Christian family and we were in church all the time. And I, oh, I, I love that that is my background. Mm -hmm. um, and just having that solid family, that church family that kind of grounded you. But it definitely wasn't until I moved out here on my own and finally found something that I couldn't do because pretty much everything in life I could check off that I, I want to do this and I did it. And then I found something that I was not capable of doing and it, it broke me and I had to sit there with God and decide, do I actually believe what I've been taught my whole life or yeah. have I just been riding on my parents' coattails and this is just some nicety, but it's not for me. And so I, I had to decide for myself, what do I actually believe? Who do I think Jesus Christ is? What do I think he did for me? Mm -hmm. And that changes everything and I don't I guess I've never asked you this I don't know if everybody like I would think it would take a hard time for you to actually make that decision for yourself like I don't know if you're just cruising along and life is good if you would actually ever have to have that come to Jesus moment you kind of do I don't know I had a, a little bit of one when it more uh, closer to I think I was in high school already but it was just you're starting to make decisions for yourself maybe think a little bit differently and you just have a point where you're like Lord you're mine. I'm so thankful that my parents raised me and and my siblings knowing God and it's like thank you God for that like they, they grounded you they give you foundation but there does come a point where you're like okay I'm now separated maybe that's why it came early because I was separated from like I was 18 okay. and I was on my own I was 10 hours away from my parents and what do you believe you can't just live off of them, their faith you know like is it your own do you love God for you and it's no longer what you learned off your parents or or some other people that made an impact in your life so and I think when that gets challenged is when you figure out what you want because I think you see a lot of kids who are like no I believe this but they're acting in a very different way mm -hmm. and they think they believe it but they haven't actually sat down and decided do I want to believe this for myself and if you truly believe something it is very easy for generally speaking, to walk in that. Yes. Like if you're like, I'm not going to do this and I believe that this is wrong, you're not going to deviate from that. If you deviate from it, you don't actually believe that you think that's wrong or that that's right. If you have those deep-seated convictions, like it's very easy to walk in that. I feel like where I get wishy-washy is when I'm not sold out one way or the other on something. Yeah, got to be 100% in. And when you do that, it makes things so much easier. You make the quality decision. This is what's going to happen and, and then things don't bother you as much. Stand firm in what you know. And God's been waiting for you. He understands that you have a family that, that or, or like a group that has raised you, known the Lord, and he's just waiting for the second that, that you're his. I don't know how to describe that, but it's a good thing when you find him for yourself. Um, you are not a half. You are a whole. Do not let other people's comments bother you. P.S. For anybody who's watching this who is married, we do not want to make you feel bad at all. Or, or put anything on you for maybe things that you have said. This is completely, I'm not thinking about anybody here, but when you're single, you will get comments directed towards you that you are not enough, I want to say. Almost mm -hmm. like they look at you as you don't have a husband, you don't have a spouse, therefore you are half. And that's not the case at all. You're whole with the Lord. And when you get two holes, two single people that are whole with the Lord, man, that does that ever make um, a wonderful relationship, a wonderful marriage covenant? If somebody says, oh, you're just waiting for, I had somebody say, you're just waiting for your other, it's like chocolate chip cookie or something. <laughs> or you're like, does that make you know? <laughs> it's like, or they're like, you're half a cookie and you're waiting for your other half. And I was like, wow. Haven't heard that one. So you'll get uh, just comments. But you know what, guys? Just let it go. You know what the devil's trying to do? Is trying to get you bitter 
trying to get you resentment, trying to get you discouraged, depressed. He knows your button. So if your button is, I'm single, I'm lonely, I'm by myself, I'm less than, bleh, you can either stay in that mud puddle or you can say, no, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And God is the center of my life. I am a whole in him. I'm one with him. And you start speaking the word of God over your life. You're a whole. You're not a half. And feeding that too. I mean, that was one of the reasons I got rid of cable was because I would binge watch the Hallmark Channel. And nobody who is single can watch the Hallmark Channel and be like, I feel great about my life. So it's <laughs> like, you just don't. You're like, well, I want that yeah. picture perfect non-existent thing. Like... <laughs> And so I recognized that I was feeding that, un like it was, it's a godly desire. And I was grateful that he gave me a desire to be married, but I was feeding it garbage yes. that was never going to satisfy. And so I would just be more unhappy after I'd watched a lot of those shows than, than I was beforehand. And it's like, well, let's just stop eating garbage and yeah. get you eating something else that is going to sustain you in the long run. Whether that's books that you read or shows that you watch or even people that you hang out with. Your, mm -hmm. your environment is huge. And if you hang out with a bunch of people who are always trying to set you up, hook you up, tell you that you need to find somebody or um, with other singles who are always complaining about being single, that's going to be your focus. And it's really hard to be content if your environment is constantly contrary to that. Yes. Yeah, God told me to get rid of my books one year. <laughs> so like, hard. It's like, what's wrong with my books? But it was it was a wrong, like Rachel was saying, how much you feed yourself. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's the Hallmark movies. Maybe it's the books. Maybe it's social media, Instagram, Facebook. If, if you sense that the Holy Spirit is like, hey, you need to take a break for a while, take a break for a while. Let that stuff go because you need to be whole in Him. And you need to find out who you are in him. If you've ever heard the quote, garbage in, garbage out. Soaking in all this stuff that's not, it's toxic. It's not good. That's what's going to come out your mouth. And what you want is the word of God that will build you up and be able to edify yourself and like comfort you and, and bring out the good things in you so that you are able to minister to other people and, and, and be okay. Like you're okay. It's okay. There will always be comments in every stage of life. Just don't let it bother you. And just be gracious with people. <laughs> uh, that's probably a little another. We'll get to that in uh, video number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. Consider living with somewhere where you haven't before. Try a roommate or try living on your own. Rachel's got this yeah. one, I think. Switching, switching up what you're used to. Yeah. Um, I mean, I moved away for college and, you know, had a roommate and... I went to graduate school and had a roommate and then when I moved out to Wyoming I elected not to get a roommate and I'd never actually lived like by myself and absolutely loved it <laughs> and not that not anything against anybody I've lived with before because <laughs> like, thank you lord I've had some awesome roommates for sure yeah but just being an introvert it was nice just to have my own safe haven to come home to and it was quiet <laughs> And it was just a safe place to be. But, you know, moving a thousand miles away from my family was definitely, I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being independent isn't a bad thing and relying on people isn't a bad thing either. And there's a healthy balance there. But doing that made a difference. And I've, I've heard all kinds of opinions on the coin of people who never had to live on their own and then got married you know, have some strengths in certain areas and maybe some weaknesses in others. And then like me, I've lived on my own for almost a decade now. And so has my fiance. And so we're, we'll see what happens <laughs> um, because we, neither one of us has had a roommate in quite some time. So um, I'm sure there'll be some learning curves there too. I would recommend considering alternatives of what you're used to just because you always have roommates. Try to live on your own. Yeah. And, and if you decide you hate it and you want to get a roommate, you can get a roommate. If you've never had a roommate, um, it will grow you. <laughs> it will. Because it, it really it's a will. relationship yeah. with another person, and it will help prepare you in marriage for even the tiny little things that pop up, just like, oh, they left their dishes in the sink and didn't put them in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Marriage is, is going to be... <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> yes. If you can prepare yourself for marriage before you're married, it will help. Yes. Yeah, I remember living with uh, my cousin. She was my roommate. She came in one day, and she's like, Nancy, come here. It's like what and we go over to the kitchen and I guess my family I picked up the habit of leaving the cupboard doors open my cousin was like do you see look look at the kitchen do you see it do you see all these guys I was like oh 
nope. So I like learned to shut cupboard doors <laughs> and <laughs> change the microwave to zero because she couldn't stand it on like a minute and two seconds or something, or like three seconds left. I just like open it. And so you just, you learn a lot when you live with a roommate. It's a really good idea to do at least once, like just to find out. And, and I think, um, it shows you a lot about yourself. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. About three months in, I was, I got real unhappy with myself because I was like, why am I not like her? <laughs> She's great in these areas and I'm not. And I started like, oh, but then God's like, no, Nancy, I made you different. It's okay. <laughs> so you do, you learn a lot about yourself uh, when you're around somebody. I feel like it needs to be said that if you've always, always, always been around people and you're never alone, mm -hmm. you, that, Red flag. Yeah, that needs to happen. There's something that needs to be dealt with there because you have to be okay with like, okay, I'm I'm not Rachel. I, I don't, I think I've gone to the mountains once by myself and like I called my pastor and I was like, just so you know, I'm going to the mountains and there's no cell service and I'll be okay, right? And he was like, okay, well, t you know, call me when you're... <laughs> So I'm a little bit different than Rachel. Rachel's like mountain woman with her gun and her horse and her <laughs> snowshoes. And she's like sitting on the mountain with God. <laughs> so I really admire that. I'm like, I'm a chicken, man. I can't go there by myself. There's a bear that's going to get me or something. Anyway, but <laughs> you need to learn how to, how to be somewhere. You could be. <laughs> I just have this picture of a painting. I'm like, I don't think it looks quite like that. <laughs> Rachel's just up there hearing from the Lord. Oh, man. And my Daniel Boone hat on. <laughs> yeah. You just need to be okay oh, with being by yourself somewhere. And I think this generation coming up, especially I've noticed that they need maybe some direction in that area because the device is so like, mm. I need my device. Spend time apart from your phone. It's a whole new. <laughs> okay, yes. I'll stop. Any other comments? Nope, I think you got <laughs> And our last one is learn how to change a tire, windshield washer fluid, get the oil check, you know. Basics. Basics. <laughs> get them basics down. And uh, of course, learn how to make a fire was Rachel's. <laughs> Slightly tongue in cheek, but you know. Well, that's a good thing to know. It is a good thing to know. You never know, but you know, somebody in Indianapolis may have less of a need for that <laughs> than in Wyoming. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. But changing a tire is always a good skill. This is a good skill to have. Yeah. And maybe learn how to like make a casserole. That's yeah, probably cook. a good one too. I was gonna say cook would be cook. Good we haven't even talked about food. No, food is important. Yeah, make sure you're not eating all those like microwave dinners mm -hmm. all the time. You know, throw in some potatoes and some meat now and then. And you can't. Yes, you can cook for yourself. I don't know yes. how many people I have heard say, "Well, I don't cook because I you can't what cook for one person," and I'm just like. You just what? don't want to cook. <laughs> I'm like, unless you hate leftovers, which why? You cook one meal and then you can have it throughout the week like four times. That's three less times you had to cook. Um, but yes, you can take your mom's lasagna recipe and cut it in half and make a smaller amount. You can absolutely cook for yourself and I highly recommend it. Or as my mom would say, just throw it in the freezer, Nancy. Yep. Just put it in the freezer. Okay, these are some things that we've learned about being single. I'm sure there's more, but that's a good basic living in your 20s and 30s. I'm sure and we stuff could and talk about this all day long. <laughs> we could talk about this all day long. Okay, so that was single and not wanting to mingle part one. Please join us for part two. Single and wanting to mingle. <laughs> okay.